Welcome back. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy, and today we're going to talk a little bit about shoe care. Uh, and I'm starting a new series that's called Taking Good Care. And this is really designed for those of you who really like your shoes, like I do, and want to just treat them right. Uh, today, it's all going to be focused on these kind of shoes. This is Shell Cordovan. It's a type of leather that actually comes from horse hide. It's not horse hide. It's actually a membrane on the rump of a horse. Uh, and it's relatively unique because it's non-permeable, uh, which means it breathes completely differently. So without further ado, here we go. So uh, what I did here is I did each of these shoes and their partner. Um, these are all shell cordovan. They're all burgundy, but they're different shades because of sun time. And uh, these are relatively new. These have been in the sun for about a year. These I bought used and uh, already had a couple years worth on, on them. And this is a new bottle of Pure Polish, which I haven't opened yet, but had a little bit of uh, leakage around the label, which I used, and uh, did a nice coat on the shoes. Um, so um, what I did is uh, I treated each of the shoes. I'm gonna let them dry uh, for about half a day, um, throw them in the sun, let them uh, be out there um, before I brush them. And then I'll come back and do a uh, follow-up after I brush them in the evening. All right, so this is Shell Cordovan Care. And what I'm doing today is I'm going to refresh the Saphir Cordovan Cream on these boots. Now this is burgundy Shell Cordovan that is actually marble. So what I'm gonna do for the purpose of today is I'm actually going to use burgundy shell cordovan cream, which I've never done before. So this is a bit of an experiment and I'm doing this live, unedited, and I'm hoping with all my hope that this stuff is as clear as it seems uh, because if it's too dark, it's gonna be ugly. So first, let me try this on the tongue and see just how dark this is. Probably should have done it on the edge of the tongue instead of on the whole tongue. And now it looks like I have some contrast stitching that's getting darkened over. But as we look here, it is pretty darn dark. You can see how much pigment there is there. And this is making this pretty dark. So why do you do it on the tongue? Because you can look at this and say, you know what, that's too dark. I'm not gonna do the rest of the boot like that. So now, luck favors the prepared. So we're gonna go ahead and start the other boot and we're gonna use a clear cordovan cream. And uh, I'll use my, my wet fingers and I'll get the other cordovan cream off of them but we're gonna just do this here. Now with cordovan cream, um, and I, I, I use this with, uh, with any of the others as well, I, I, like to, um, I like to get it nice and wet so that it uh, really has a chance to absorb into the shell. Uh, shell is a membrane, unlike a uh, unlike a leather, so the absorption of the oils from the cordovan cream uh, takes longer. Now you can use um, uh, uh, other uh, conditioners, and uh, I like to use um, uh, from, uh, from Pure Polish, I like to use their water-resistant creams. I also like to use um, uh, Venetian shoe cream, but every now and then I like to use the Saphir as well. And this is the right time in the rotation for me to, to mix it up and to use Saphir, so that's what I'm doing. And, you know, you don't have to use a lot. Um, the big thing is, is to rub it in while it's wet. And 
and you know I had some on my hand there so there's some of the uh, colored and pigmented that's getting on to the boots which is okay and you can see it's marble so it's got spots that are dark and spots that are light anyway um, so that's that's just part of it and you can also see that I've got a couple of uh, small stains here and there the trick again is to put it and make it wet enough so that it has enough to absorb okay now I don't I don't do this often right this is like a once really with with this with this particular cordovan cream and these boots it's probably once a year uh not uh not more often than that so all right so i've done that i gotta do the tongue all right hopefully i got all of this on camera otherwise i'm gonna be spending a lot of time editing which is not my favorite thing and you can probably tell that when you watch my videos because i don't edit a lot but all right, so we're gonna move on to this next one. And uh, again, just, it darkens it when it gets wet. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's darkening the uh, shell. Uh, you just gotta, again, I'm rubbing it in, getting it so that there's a, a nice thick layer on it so that it can absorb, but not so thick that there's any of it actually standing on the shell. Now, how long you let it sit on the shell uh, is going to vary, but you know, the idea here is not to have, not to have so much that it's standing. Some of them, the broke holes is not going to kill anything, you know, the, but uh, also, I mean, these were kind of dry. So I'm really putting a layer on um, in order to uh, moisten them up a bit, okay? Now, um, probably I'll use conditioner cleaner on these again, the pure polish conditioner cleaner, which is safer for shell. Um, and I, I like it better than like a Renovateur. I'll use that again in, in, in a few months. Um, but for right now, I'm gonna run with this regimen uh, because, you know, for the all, better part of last year, I had a layer of the uh, um, water-resistant cream, and that's all I used. And uh, and that is a, a very different material, and, and part of the reason that I think I'm getting this reaction to the Cordovan cream is because I do have that, uh, that cream on there. So, all right, so we're going to let this sit and um, then start brushing. Now, I use my cleaning brush, which is clean. I actually went through and, and, and cleaned it and just focus on, on getting off the excess, all right, and, and work on cleaning it up. And you can see, really pulls out the shine very quickly. And the brushing is actually really, really good for the shell. There's one thing you have to do a lot with shell, it's brushing it. Okay, and so let me do it again here and I'll have to get some some polish and, and get there but you can see I have a little bit of a mark here at the toe which I want to make sure that I get so and I just rub it and then feel it with my my nail just to make sure that it's uh it's good Okay, and then I'll brush that right away because what I'm really doing is just cleaning it up. Okay, and there is a little dent there. I could use a deer bone on that, but I'm probably not going to bother. All right, so. Now, I like to brush the shell with coarse brushes and lighter brushes, but when I'm just pushing the, the, the conditioner into it, I just use a horsehair brush. And then after it's fully dry, I'll probably let it sit an hour. Then I will use a, um, a boar hair brush to really beat it down. But I'm not gonna make you wait the hour that I'm doing it. Oh, 
that part, I'll just turn it off and turn it back on. All right, but you can see it's picking up the shine really, really well. Get in the welt. Clean welts are always important, especially when you have very large rotation like mine and you're not tending to your shoes every couple weeks. You gotta make sure you do some of the basics when you when you do like a semi-annual or annual care like this, because if you don't do it, you're probably not looking at the shoe again for a while. You're just wearing it and going. Alright, so here. This is kind of stage one. They've gotten some, some conditioner on them and they're going to sit now uh, for, I'm gonna call it an hour, we'll see later. So just checking in on the shoes. They've been out in the sun now for about five hours and uh, you can see the uh, sun is starting to have an impact here. Having the uh, the, the cordovan cream on it actually helped and here you can see it's just all absorbed out real nice and the VSC continues to keep that dark color so uh, back at you in a few so we're back and we're taking a look at these and the uh, this is a board hair brush and really just beat the heck out of the shoes. The shell cordovan really releases its oils and they come out. You can see I took the laces out so I could get to the tongue easier. All right. Now this is the tongue where I didn't darken it. And you can see the brown tones in this, but you can see the burgundy tones in it also. That's what's great about this shaved shell cordovan. I have a pair of green shaped shell cordovan boots coming in from Meerman. And I know a lot of people have a lot of things to say about Meerman quality. I've always been happy with it. Uh, and there's the one that I darkened. So again, it's not, it's not terrible. Um, but uh, I love the fact that I can get unique materials from Meerman that I can't get anywhere else. And I can, I can try new styles um at a very low cost of entry so all right so now just gonna go back and there we go just roll my brush on the floor so um hopefully i'm probably gonna have to edit my hair out of that but isn't that nice looking and these are going to be good another six months. I think uh, this time around, I'm going to put a uh, tighter lace into them. Um, what I had in there before was um, really thick. So, and I'm going to go with something uh, a little bit uh, tighter wound and uh, go from there. But anyway, thanks for watching. So uh, we're back and just trying to see how these did. I'm just using a regular horse hair brush this time. And these are the Saphir. They've lightened up. Of course, they're in the sun now. Well, and I use the term sun loosely. I live in Wisconsin, so there's not that much sun this time of day. I think you can visibly see that the contrast between these is different. blue on them, I guess. Well, I've got a, an 
idea on that as well. So I'll just put those here. Take the other one. Now, I actually did this by a, a bush that I have that's got this stuff going. So there's probably pollen and all kinds of other garbage right around here. Which happens. You know, you don't move your table out of the way just because you're sunning your shoes, right? Let's get there. Okay. So let's go here. My shoes are visit or you can are tactically warm, right? I can tell they've been outside in the sun. So now I have a question. They look pretty good, but should they look better? This pure polish, water resistant cream. Looks like this. It's a little burgundy. I don't use a lot. Just go ahead and put a layer on the shoe. When they say a little goes a long way, that's what they mean. You use a little fingertip, that much, half the shoe. Now you can do multiple coats like that, but I like to I like to apply that much a little bit more because I'm going to try to do this with the whole shoe. This is a Full cut bleacher. Put it next to that. That's treated. That's not. What I like about the water resistant cream is that it stops rain spots from happening on the shoes. And I think that the shell wears better over time by using it. I use it very sparingly, as you can see. Uh, I said you can do multiple coats, but I won't. I'll just do one. And I won't spend a lot of time uh, brushing them immediately after. I'll let it set in and soak in like I did with everything else. I used a little bit too much there. And I'm going to rub it off here. This is the first time these shoes have ever had anything on them. Everything was just factory before. So I used Saphir Burgundy as the conditioner. Normally I like to stick with it, just use pure polish, and then not add anything to it, but I really like the way this sets in. And I 
wanted to try out the conditioner for sunning them specifically. And sunning takes a lot out. A lot of guys will say you got to condition the shoes a couple times a day while they're in the sun. Uh, most of those guys live in the south where there's a lot of sun. So it's a totally different uh, proposition. So anyway, so that is how I prepare them. And now I'm just going to just brush them off. I like to brush them and then just let them sit. And then what I'll probably do is I'll probably brush them again with a horsehair brush. And then again with a horsehair brush. So four hair, horsehair, four hair brush, horsehair. I always tend to go like that. One thing about shell cordovan, you really cannot brush it. And you really can underbrush it. <laughs> so when in doubt, brush. Brush more. If you're going to dampen them dampen the brush like with a spray bottle um, once not more than that but uh, you know you can also like dip it on your uh, shoe polish thing but that's it not a lot See, I'm not going for clarity here. This is shell cordovan. I'm not going for a high shine. You get a nice reflection. You can see there's a lot of polish on that. Just trying to get it off. Whatever summer is going to throw up. That's the kind of way I look at this. This is my summer ritual for getting these shell cordovan shoes ready to go. Now, I could sun them for days and days and days. I don't really need to. What I need to do is wear them. So, June is going to be shell cordovan month. I have four pairs that should be coming. So, trying to get everything in place for them all to be there. Again, just looking for a little bit of a reflection, a little bit of shine. Natural oils will make it so you have to brush the shoes just because you'll get um, some oils permeating out through the shoe. This is normal. And of course, I wouldn't be a brushing video if I didn't hit the camera at least twice. So there you go. Shoes. Done.